How to create an expandable floating action button animation in Flutter with multiple smaller floating action buttons. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. We use this package speed dial for creating easily multiple floating action buttons. Let's get started with an our scaffold floating action button property. And here we want to create a speed dial widget, which comes from this package. And with this, we have here this floating action button at the bottom. And we also want to include there an icon. So we put here an animated icon inside, in this case, the menu close icon. And secondly, you can create within the children property all these smaller floating action buttons by creating every time a speed dial child widget. And here inside, you can create an icon and also a label for this floating action button. And next to it, we want to create another small floating action button with a different icon and a different label. And with this, we have here this animated floating action button. And here we have then our two smaller floating action buttons that we have basically defined inside of the children property. And to make this work, you also need to go to your pubspec YAML file and under your dependencies, you need to include the speed dial package. If you like, you can also set the background color of your main floating action button and also the background color of your smaller floating action buttons. And with this, all of our floating action buttons have a different background color. Within your speed dial widget, you can also create an overlay color with some opacity. And with this, we go from this yellow background color to this black background color that we have defined here inside with these overlay colors. Right now we have this animation between the X and this menu icon and you can also put a normal icon inside. Therefore you can simply set here this icon property instead. And with this we have here every time the share icon and it is not animating anymore. Within the smaller floating action buttons we also have the property on tap. And if we click on the small floating action button then you can do something. In my case I want to show a toast message. And the same functionality you can also add for each of your other floating action buttons. And with this, I can click on a floating action button and then we see here this toast message of the item that we have selected. For displaying these social icons, I have made use of this font awesome icons package. And for showing the toast message, I also make use of this flutter toast package. So if you want to use them, then make sure to go to your pubspec YAML file and here under your dependencies, you can include then these both packages. Next, you can set the spacing between your main floating action button and the first floating action button. So you can control the space between and you can also control the space between each of the children floating action buttons. Simply go to your speed dial and here you have the two properties spacing and spacing between children. And with this, we have more space between our floating action buttons. Within your speed dial, you have two more useful properties. First of all, the close manual property. By default, if you click on your smaller floating action buttons, then your menu will always close. However, if you set now this close manual to true, then you can click here on the different floating action buttons and you see it is not closing anymore. And secondly, you can implement the properties on open and on close. And here inside, you can then decide what should happen if the floating action button menu opens or if it closes. And with this, if I click on this floating action button, it says opened. And if I close it, then it says closed. And finally, if we click on Android on the back button, then it simply should close the floating action buttons menu. However, if I now click on it, then it will simply leave our application. To fix this, we create within the speed dial widget this open close dial property and we simply save this property then inside of our state. So we have here this value notifier. And secondly, we want to detect if the user clicks on the Android back button. To do this, we simply go to our scaffold and here around we want to wrap then the will pop scope widget. And now if the user clicks on this Android back button, then we are going inside of this callback. And here inside, we want to check first of all, if our floating action button menu is open. And if this is the case, then we want to close it again. And lastly, you need to return here false in case you want to stay inside of your application. And otherwise, if the dial is not open, then we can simply return here true and then we will leave the application. Let's also try it out. If I click on this Android back button, then he will simply close our floating action button menu. 
And if I click again on this button, then we will leave the application because we return here true and therefore he will leave the application. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, then you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.